Last time on Improv Tabletop, we met a brand new trio of heroes, or you might say merry Pokemon, Farfetch'd, Ditto, and Decidui, who are working together to try and bring down Don Giovanni and his terrible plans to turn all Pokemon into fighting amusement machines for him. Upon learning from their friend Magmar, also one of the merry Pokemon, that there was a shipment coming through the forest, they decided to go and do a little bit of a highway robbery. So through the Sudobudo forest, Lord James and Lady Jessica of Clan Rocket were delivering an EXP share to Don Giovanni. So they waited on the sides of the road, and when the moment was right, they struck out. They freed the Rapidashes that were pulling the carriage, freed the Mr. Mime who was driving the carriage, and after some very fancy battling, they finally defeated Lord James and Lady Jessica, shooting them off into the air in true Clan Rocket fashion and they found the EXP share, but they also found Meowth hiding underneath some of the wreckage. What's going to happen next with this strange little cat man? Let's find out here in the world of the Merry Pokemon. What's shaking, everybody? You're listening to Improv Tabletop, the Fate RPG actual play where we make up everything on the spot. I'm Ned Wilcock, your host and GM, and today I'm joined by... Justin Porter, a.k.a. JP, and I have a love-hate relationship with Elden Ring. Connor Wood, I've got PTSD, pre-traumatic stress disorder, with Elden Ring. <laughs> Christian Randall, I don't have Elden Ring. Lucky. <laughs> I know, I'm just like, man, why did I do to myself? <laughs> Seems pretty obvious when we're recording this one, I guess. <laughs> yeah, S- such a glowing review of Elden Ring for all you people out there who want to get into it. Apparently it's going to mess you up. It's great, I'm in so much pain. <laughs> Well, speaking of video games, that is the basis of the world that we are in. So let's go ahead and get back into it. So Decidui, you just lifted up a corner of a piece of the wreckage of the carriage and underneath was a very, very well-dressed Meowth who had like a little miter cap on his head and some nice robes and a cloak. So he looks up at you and he's just like, eh, this is really bad, guys. My owl eyes go wide as I recognize him from my past. <gasps> And so I drop it on his head. I I drop the carriage back down on his head. (laughs) And he just yowls from underneath as it like lands on top of his tail. And you see him like (laughs) tugging on the tail from inside and finally manages to pull it all the way in. Oh, I'm so torn. I have to help. (sighs) So I'll lift it back up. Hello, Meowth. Long time no see. Uh, He's going to roll a clever check to see if he recognizes you. (laughs) And he gets a hey plus one. He's like nursing his tail and he's like straightening out some of the kinks in it. And he looks up at you and he's like, wait a second. Oh, you're, you're, oh my gosh, you ran away from us. You're, you're like a traitor and stuff. Depends on who you ask. To these Pokemon here, I'm, a, I'm an ally and I'm a friend. And I could be to you again if you're willing to change your point of view. Yeah, but if not, he'll hurt you. I'm Ditto. Hello. (laughs) Ditto's our muscle. Yeah, check this out. And I turn into a Persian with a really dumb looking face. (laughs) (laughs) And for a second, Meowth is very impressed. And then he notices the doofy looking face. And he's a little bit less impressed than he was before. Well, if I'm not scary enough, we got Farfetch. And he hates normal types. And you're looking pretty normal to me. Ah, yuck. Uh, normal. <laughs> so if you want to help us out, Meowth, maybe you can fill us in. We were able to stop the shipment, but why are they shipping experience share? What? What's the bigger picture here? What's the bigger plan? Because if all we have is a piece, we're never going to be able to really stop Don Giovanni. Yeah, roll to overcome with, I'll say, either forceful or flashy, depending on which you feel is more appropriate for your kind of intimidation technique here. I'll go with just a straight force. We'll see how that does, even though it's not a weird... Well, 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 if that ain't a one. Okay, I'm going to roll for Meowth to see how scared he is of Clan Rocket and how much he wants to hold his tongue. (laughs) Meowth doesn't have great rolls. He's like, sure, he's scared of Clan Rocket, but he's more scared of you in this moment. And he's like wringing his paws together and he goes, well, Don Giovanni, he just, he's building a new moat around the (gasps) castle and he used to fill it with something terrible. And I mean, well, you don't get a Gyarados easy from a Magikarp, you know? Ah, jeez, those things are so bad. He's got hyper beam and stuff. What? What? (laughs) That's like a, 
that's a war crime. <laughs> well, technically, according to like the worldwide sort of rules, yes, it's a bit of a war crime. But to Don, he doesn't care. He's Don Giovanni. Criminals. Um, I think we need to save a bunch of Magikarp, and honestly, Magikarp are pretty useless, so I don't feel a lot of motivation to help them, but at the same time, they're still Pokemon, and a Pokemon is a Pokemon, no matter how pathetic. Yeah, and we'd rather him just have a bunch of Magikarps than, like, a bunch of Garrod... Garrodice? A pack of Garrodine? I believe it's... Gyaradosis. I believe it's Gyaradosis, yes. Garrodine. We don't want him to have those. <laughs> Meowth is like, yeah, that'd be... And we don't even know what's going to happen, like, after that. I mean, he's still going to have all those EXP share helmets. And, you know, he's got that fighting ring underneath the castle where he can, like, constantly be battling Pokemon against each other. And so he can get people leveled up pretty darn quick. Meowth, I don't know where the saying cat got your tongue comes from, but you are disproving that heavily. <laughs> Thank you. Guys, I, I think we know what to do. Level up until we evolve. I'm on your trail. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, you were agreeing with me. Well, hey. <laughs> uh, I just need to clarify something. Our intel comes from our campfire, so it's not always the most reliable. I thought this was the only EXP share, but Meowth just said that Giovanni's got loads, and this was just one of them. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta go to the castle and like, uh, I don't know. Does anyone know how to? Do we have a Voltorb? Uh, I don't know. Is that ethical? Voltorb? <laughs> we don't, we don't, uh, we don't ask him to do that anymore. That was okay. uh, while he yeah, was yeah, Dunder yeah. Don Giovanni. <laughs> right there. Um, well, we gotta do something. We don't know how much he has, but we gotta probably get rid of him, or I don't know, steal him. I look around at our crew, and I look at Meowth, and a little Rotom light bulb pops above my head. <laughs> and I say, I think I've got an idea. And Rotom goes floating off into the forest. <laughs> so my buddy Meowth here, we are buddies, aren't we, Meowth? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely, 100%. Perfect. My buddy Meowth here is going to teach us how to pass as people. I walk on two legs. Far-fetched, you're on two legs. Ditto. I have an idea, and I transform into James. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This is an even better idea. You're absolutely passing. I mean, you do have a dumb face, but you're definitely <laughs> passing as James because he also has a dumb face. Yeah. I mean, it's a different kind of dumb when you look at it really closely, but I mean, it's it's the same general spectrum of dumbness. <laughs> well, I had an idea. That face, I don't know if that's going to pass off for that face. So what if we put Decidueye on his shoulders? <laughs> I will be the bottom half of James. <laughs> and I transform into James's legs with a funny face on the rump. <laughs> and we just put the coat on. I go get James's coat and I lay it over Decidueye so it looks like. And we just fiddle it around a little bit. And look, Decidueye looks like a person. This is our best heist yet. <laughs> I adjust my little leaf feathers around my eyes so it looks more like a mask. And far-fetched, I think I have a plan for you too. And I'm going to take some of the metal and, and wood from the cart. And I'm going to go ahead and like, ting, 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 bend it a bit and use some Pokemon moves on it to bend it into shape. And I'm going to make him like a little, as best I can, not great, obviously, but a little suit of armor. Nice. Thank you. So he looks like a knight with, and I'm going to like cover his leak in metal. So it looks like a little sword. <laughs> oh, I just feel powerful. This is, I wonder if this is what it feels like to evolve. <laughs> it's sort of like a metal coat. Yeah, I'll say Decidueye, roll with either Clever or Careful to successfully craft this suit of armor. I'll go with Clever. Oh boy, that's not great. Um, I am going to, I'm going to use it up already. I'm going to use my stunt for this turn because I want this to turn out good for my buddy. <laughs> oh, nice. All right, so yeah, you you know how to hit a Taurus eye from yards and yards and yards away. You, you got an eye for precision, so... You hammer out this plate armor, and you're about to put it on far-fetched, and then you notice that every single piece of the armor has Ditto's, like, doofy face on it. So you go back through, and you hammer those out so that it looks like a regular suit of armor. I liked it with the kinks. <laughs> <laughs> and far-fetched, you looking a little bit like a surfetched right now. Ooh. This is the best day of my life. All right, let's, let's go, guys. Meowth, you're going to lead us there, and uh, we're going to sneak in as people. I'm going to sneak in as a new member of Clan Rocket with my buddy here, who's not very uh, big on height. And uh, we're going to go ahead and try and save our Magikarp friends and maybe maybe save a few more Pokemon if we can. All right, legs. Forward ho. I forward ho. You guys start walking and Meowth from behind you is like, you, you expect me to just like walk all the way to on my own two feet? You expect me to walk? You're right. <laughs> we know what to do with this fella. 
and uh, I want to kick him into the stratosphere <laughs> with his friends. <laughs> oh wait, do we need him? Do we need this we guy? We do! All right, all right, <laughs> never mind. Now, Meowth, now that you're one of us, you have to pull your own weight. If you really are, you know, getting some shin splints or something, I understand. Um, why don't you try walking like a normal Meowth on all fours? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's probably why you've got some back pain. You're walking unnaturally. And he looks so incredibly degraded as he gets down onto all fours and begins walking slowly alongside you. How's your back feel? Uh, it feels humiliated. <laughs> oh, well, I thought it would feel better. <laughs> There's a difference between the physical feelings and the emotional feelings. <laughs> would you like to get in a Pokeball? I think Ditto has an extra. Yeah, I have I have this one. <laughs> and he starts spitting and howling. He's like, you'll never see me inside one of those contraptions. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Ditto. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's fair. That's fair. This one's mine anyway. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, you guys start walking along your way to the castle, and it's a, a pretty far distance from here, so it's going to take you a while to get there. Eventually, you find yourselves at the entrance to a cave. <gasps> uh, there's a system of tunnels that goes through the mountain that eventually leads to the castle far on the other side. But yes, you see darkness and there's like some stalactites dripping on the inside and the music changes as you get close to it. Guys, should we save really quick? Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. All right. I, I write down the stuff we've done so far. <laughs> Just in a little notebook. Ooh, it's going to be a little tough in there. I'm assuming we might run into some Zubat or Geodude or some other rock type. So uh, ditto, why don't you uh, go ahead and fall back? I'll take the lead. I've got the type advantage here. Okay. I transform into a Dialga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to fight, but you guys can still write on me if you want. Uh, hello, God. <laughs> hey. So, this very impressive looking uh, individual with a decidui on its back and a surfetched and a Meowth just kind of walking next to it. A quote-unquote surfetched, I should say. You head into this cave. Uh, as you're getting deeper into it, it's smelling very, like, musty and damp in here. You see there's, like, some little pools that have gathered in some of the lower areas of the cave, and everything is kind of eerily quiet as you're moving forward through the cave system. Um, I would like, if possible, to keep an eye out for anybody, any any Pokemon that look like they might be in trouble, you know. I'm, I'm always looking to help, and this seems like a place where something could run amok. Yeah, you're, uh... Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you just got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you're looking around very careful all around you, like on the ground. And then, unexpectedly, from above you, a screech winds out and a Zubat comes and lands, like, right on top of your feathery hood and starts, like, clawing at it. Ah, Zubat! I'm going to just try and, like, grab him and hold him in front of my face and shake my feathered finger at him. <laughs> now, now, now. No, no, no. It's a bad Zubat. <laughs> yeah, roll two attack with quick. He's going to try and dodge with quick. He's just going to scream at you. <laughs> hey, 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 that's pretty bad. <laughs> um, a one. <laughs> All right. And the Zubat also gets a one. So having tied, you don't, like, succeed in catching him, but you are going to gain a boost and the boost I'm going to give you is I'm actually going to look up. Nice. So I will. I won't be able to catch him. I'll swipe at him, but then I'll slowly, as the music builds, I'll look up at the ceiling of the cave. Yeah, you look up and you see that not just this Zubat, but tons of other Zubat. There's a couple Golbat and Crobat in there as well, all gathered up on the ceiling. And the Zubat who attacked you is like, strangers in the cave, strangers in the cave, everybody get them. Oh, no. 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 Uh, All right, boys. Looks like we're going to have to muscle our way through. Okay. I'm going to transform into a slugma. (laughs) From God to a slug. I don't know how to use any Dialga moves, but I do know (laughs) slugma. And so with a rush of high-pitched screeches and echolocation, all of these bat Pokemon come swooping down at you. And we're going to get into an exchange here. Woo-hoo! I'm going to split these up into a few different ranks. We're going to have all of the Zubat, all of the Golbat, and all of the Crobat going on different turns. Oh, dang. So all of the Zubat are going to come down towards you guys. They are going to flutter around in that oh-so-annoying way that Zubat are known for. <laughs> and they're going to try and pull and let's say, an air cutter on you. Ah, beans. They're going to fly around in, like, all these complex patterns. They're shooting, like, blades of air out from between their wings, and they're trying to, like, corral all of you into a very tight area. 
So they're going to attack with quick. And how would you guys like to defend against this assault? All right, boys, do the wiggly wog. And we'll pull out our classic wiggly wog maneuver. Yeah, I pull out (laughs) what he said. (laughs) Um, So the wiggly wog, I say, I'm going to flap my wings and jump up real high. And the other two are going to go back to back to uh, strike out in all directions at the same time while I try and hit down from above in defense. All right. So with this fancy team maneuver that you've got here, let's have you guys roll to defend with clever. And you know, let's make this a teamwork move. Decidui, you're the most clever. Connor and JP, how clever are you guys? Plus one. I got to do. All right. So you can get an extra plus one from each of them. So in total, you'll be rolling with plus five clever. All right, boys, the Wiggly Wog. Wiggly Wog, engage! Ooh, well, I'm glad I have that plus five. That is a plus four. The Zubat also got plus four. (laughs) Then I will invoke my boost. I'm actually going to look up. As I jump up into the air, I'm looking up to also dodge the uh, Golbat and Crowbat that are coming in. Um, So I'm going to boost that by two to give it a plus six. Is that what I said? Six, a plus six. (laughs) Very nice. So yeah, with this expertly orchestrated team maneuver here, you're all like acting in perfect tandem back to back, working like a well-oiled machine while Meowth is just kind of like punched up underneath your feet. (laughs) But you managed to successfully like, you're striking out at just the right moments to stop the Zubats from getting into their air cutter formation to kind of pen you guys in. And they all disperse out further into the cave. And after the Zubats, let's go with Ditto. Okay, so I'm currently a little slugma, and these guys are bozos. So aren't they allergic to rock slide? Yeah, I'm going to use a rock slide on them. They are quite allergic. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, roll to attack with forceful. Rock slide seems like a pretty forceful move. Ah, that is a plus two. All right, Zubats are going to dodge with quick getting a plus two also. Uh. That means you're not going to get any damage in on them, but you would gain a boost. And the boost that I'm going to give to you is ground defense, like a a tower defense kind of situation. Yeah, dig it. And ditto, who would you like to go next? Oh yes, I'm going to pass it off to our far-fetched. Well, I'm gonna take my newly found sword and I'm gonna throw it as a boomerang, see how many I can take out of them. <laughs> All right, go ahead and roll to attack with, I'll say either quick or flashy. It's plus four. Very nice. Zubats are going to defend with quick, getting a plus three. So you throw your sword boomerang leak weird thingy up into the air. It goes and it smashes a few of the Zubats in the side of the head and they go tumbling down to the ground. They have fainted. You've managed to clear out about a third of the Zubats. Nice. Go team. It's my uh, new evolution, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get there, bud. All right, well, I guess I'll pass it off to Desidui. Um, As I am coming back down towards the ground from my, my big old jump, I will look at our situation and realize we are in what seems like a dire pinch. So uh, my eyes will begin to glow a ghostly purple and my feathers will start to rustle in an unfelt wind. And from the tips of each of my feathers, spectral chains will shoot out to try and pin these Pokemon down. Um, I'm going to use Spirit Shackle, my my signature move. Yeah, roll to attack the Zubat with Clever. They're once again going to defend with Quick. These are some Quick boys. Surprise, that's almost all they know. (laughs) Um, that is going to be a plus four. They only got a plus two. So with your spirit shackles, what does it look like as you incapacitate the rest of the Zubats? Each chain shoots out of the feather and wraps around a Zubat and just brings it to the ground immediately. And it's not the impact that knocks them out. It's the spectral energies that confuse their little addled brains and put them to sleep immediately. So they're snoring by the time they hit the cave floor and it's just the Golbats and the Crowbats left. Oh, jeez, there's these guys. <laughs> now the real fight begins, and we all back up next to each other and look up as the Crowbats take point. So the Crowbats, there's not as many of them, but of course Crowbats are much more powerful than Zubats. 
they coming down from above are going to they're going to try and use their confuse ray ah oh, no so uh there's only three of these crowbats and they get into like a triangle formation around you and they start spinning slowly and it gets faster and faster and it's kind of like the lantern that the Dai Li use to hypnotize people in Avatar yeah. <laughs> as these guys are just spinning around and around you and you can see these ghostly lights in their eyes. So they are going to attack with Flashy. How would you guys like to try and defend against their Confuse Ray? Uh, that's a psychic type move, right? Uh, that is Ghost. Ghost. And ghosts are allergic to ghosts. Yes, they are. A chew. A chew. Uh, what's not allergic to ghosts? Hey, Christian. Dark. Okay. Dark yeah. type. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to uh, transform into a hound doom because I'm like, ah, beans. Now I'm a hound doom. And I will just try and cover my eyes and reach over and cover mouth size as well. Oh, yeah, he's here. Hey, bud. I do the same thing and I throw my sword in the air to see if I can, like, knock him out. Nice. <laughs> All right. This seems mostly like it's a pretty quick maneuver to try and react fast to what's going on here. Which of you has the highest quick? I have two. I have one. Uno. Okay. So let's have far-fetched roll to defend with quick, and you can get an extra plus two from your friends. So that's a plus four. Plus four. And the crowbats got a flat zero, actually. Nice! <laughs> we all disguised ourselves quick enough. Yeah, so on a success with style, when you defend, not only does your opponent not get what they want, but you get a boost. Yes! Lots of boost you guys are picking up. Uh, the boost that I'm going to give you is, you can't confuse me, I'm not smart enough. <laughs> <laughs> that feels appropriate. Oh, that's so good. It's like uh, the reason why Side Doc is such a, a good psychic type, because <laughs> he's an idiot. <laughs> All right, that does it for the Crowbats, and they're going to pass it over to the Golbats. And there are six of these guys, but they're not quite as powerful as the Crowbats. They are just going to go right at it with some poison fang. They're <gasps> trying to bite you guys. Ooh, that is also bad for me. I think it's bad for me too. Isn't that bad for Dark? Ugh, shoot. And that is going to be an attack with Forceful against them, just going straight for you. How'd you guys like to defend? Oh. It's all up to you, Farfetched. And using his new steel armor, I'm going to try and hide behind him. <laughs> He's going to just take it and, and hope the steel armor protects us. <laughs> and I'm going to swing around my sword in a flashy-like way. All right, so you're trying to, like, fend him off? Um, I would like to try and give JP a boost by transforming into... Um, Christian, what's that sword and shield Pokemon? Uh... Which which one? The sword and the shield one. The one from. I want to transform into the sword Pokemon, like the sword sword. Oh yes, that would be Hone Edge. Hone Edge, yeah. I want to transform into a Hone Edge and be like, swing me, swing me. <laughs> <laughs> and with my newfound Hone Edge, I swing. Okay, uh, Ditto. What's your flashy? My flashy is plus two. All right, that means far fetched. You can get an extra plus one to your flashy defense. Decidui, you're defending with sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> plus six. Nice. <laughs> I got a straight zero. <laughs> <laughs> the Golbats rolled a natural minus four on the dice, so they're going to spend a fate point to re-roll. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> the aspect that they are going to invoke is Hungry Cave Dweller. Hmm, yummy. And that brings it up to a plus four. Oh. So yeah, they come in from all directions, and you start just like batting them off with Hone Edge. Most of them go flying off into the dark recesses of the cave to regroup. But there's a couple of them who are like, wait, what's this hiding behind this guy? <laughs> and uh, they give Decidui a big old poisonous chomp for four stress. Oh, oh right in the stress. Yeah, that, uh, that's really going to hurt me. I'm, a, I'm just a little grass boy. I'm going to find a potion for you, fella. <laughs> so now that the Golbats are finished, we're going to pass it over to Farfetch'd. Back at the top of the next exchange. I want, because I imagine since he's a hone edge, how does he move around? He's got to fly a little bit, right? Yeah, they float. I'm yeah. going to throw him, and hopefully he flies around and takes out as many crowbats as he can. Yeah, we can we can Mjolnir this. <laughs> yeah, that seems like a pretty flashy tag team kind of attack, so roll to attack with flashy. And the crowbats are going to defend with careful to try and dodge out at just the right moment. I got plus four. Ooh. I'm going to invoke my um, boomerang leak, throw it as well, so I I can re-roll that. <laughs> All right. Plus two. Man, these bats are not rolling super great. Well, they, with their modifier, they still get up to a plus three, which is decent. 
So, yeah, Hone Edge, as you're flying through the air, you manage to clip one of them on the side of the head, and it goes down to the ground. But the other two dodge out of the way of the boomerang leak at just the right moment, so they don't end up taking any stress from that. I don't actually know a lot of Hone Edge's moves, so I'm really just using Tackle. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> and so that is Farfetch'd and Ditto. Who would you like to go next? Let's go with Decidueye. All right, um, after being quite injured, I'm going to sort of limp back and seeing how well Spirit Shackle did last time, I'm going to try another ghost type move. And again, the ghostly purple energy glows from my eyes and my feathers rustle in an unfelt wind, except this time you feel the wind as I cast ominous wind. Whoa! <laughs> and a ghostly spectral wind blows through the cave to try and knock these into the wall. All right. Are you going for the Golbats or the Crobats? Um, I'm going for the Golbats. All right. The bigger force they're going to try and defend with forceful to pump their wings as best they can against this wind all right i'm trying to do this as a clever thing i saw how effective i was last time so i'm trying to repeat the process all right i will take a plus four they got a plus three. Oh, we are just beating them yeah <laughs> yeah you can buy they are flapping their wings as best they can but one of them starts getting tired and it slams into another one as it loses traction in the air and they both go flying up against the wall of the cave so you've taken out two of the gold bats and now there are four left Meowth, why don't you help? <laughs> yeah, you, you pass it over to Meowth. He was like, oh, yes, yes, I'm, I'm supposed to be attacking here. Oh, gosh, oh, gosh. <laughs> use Lucky Coin. We'll get some more money afterwards. Yeah, use Payday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm sorry. It's been so long since I've used my own hands to try and do anything. <laughs> so he gets up from the ground and he brushes off his fancy cloak and puts his hands together and he squints his eyes really hard and you see the coin on his forehead starts to glow and then there's a little pop and another coin goes flying out and then with the sound like a popcorn machine a bunch of coins just start <laughs> flying out of his head at the Golbats and he ca he he doesn't cast Payday he uses Payday <laughs> on the Golbats so he's rolling to attack with Flashy getting a plus two and they're going to try and defend with forceful to stave off the coins getting a plus one <gasps> meow i'm proud of you boy <laughs> so yeah the coins go shooting through the air it's like a slot machine gone wrong <laughs> two of them manage to clip two more of the gold bats who go flying up against the cave walls and now there's only two of them Yes, stay strong. And Meowth is feeling a little cocky, and he's like, ha, you can't even take us. Come on, you Golbats, just try and get us. Oh, no, why would you do that? <laughs> Meowth, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> well, I mean, technically the bad guys are the only ones who haven't gone yet in the exchange. Yeah, but yeah. yeah the Golbats, uh, the only two that remain, they look down at Meowth, and they're like, okay, okay. You want some? <laughs> and they're going to go straight at him with, you know what? They're just going to use mean look. <laughs> on the out. Yeah, get him. So they get in close on either side and they just start glaring at him. Psychological damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're going to roll two attack with Flashy and Meowth is going to defend with Clever. So the Golbats, wow, that's a minus four on the dice. Yes. Uh, let's just see what Meowth gets trying to defend with Clever. He gets a plus five. Meowth! <laughs> Meowth! He's so clever! <laughs> yeah, uh, the Golbats, they're they're going to once again invoke their hungry cave dweller aspect to completely re-roll that. <laughs> and that's a minus two on the dice. So yeah, Meowth succeeds with style in defending against these Golbats. <laughs> so he's going to get a boost. And the boost that Meowth is going to get is maybe I can do this. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that does it for the Golbats, and that brings it over to the Crowbats then. And what the Crowbats are going to do, seeing that so many of their friends have fallen, they're not going to worry about the Confuser this time. They're going to go straight for Hypnosis this time around, <gasps> which is a psychic move. So they get into that same sort of pattern, except there's only two of them now, and they start spinning, but they're going like up and down in like strange zigzaggy formations to try and hypnotize you guys. They're going to attack with Flashy. How would you guys like to defend? I want to transform into a very pretty crowbat and make them feel bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> with a dumb face. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm gonna just try and close my eyes again quickly because I, I, that's the only defense I really know against this. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just gonna s close my eyes, spin around with Malik straight in front of me, see if I can like whirlwind hit one of them as they come towards me. <laughs> All right, so that'll be quick for Decidueye, flashy for Ditto, and forceful for Farfetch'd. And you know what, now that Meowth is actually part of this, he is going to try and just like kind of leap up out of the way. He's also going to defend with quick. I got a one. I also got a one. And I got a two. Uh, Meowth also got a two. Ooh. The Crobats got a three. Dang, boys! Oh, no. They didn't feel bad at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting so drowsy. That is going to be one stress each to Meowth and Farfetch'd and two stress each to Decidueye and Ditto. Okay. Oh, oh. How you, how you doing, Decidueye? Yeah. I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm so stressed. <laughs> I'm so stressed and tired. You do have your consequences that you can use to mitigate some of that stress. Um, I, th I think I'll take one minor consequence. That covers two stress or just one? Uh, that's going to cover two stress. Okay, yeah, I'll take a minor consequence this time. All right. And the minor consequence that I'm going to give you is mildly hypnotized. Okay, I like that. That's good. <laughs> and that does it for the Crobats. And we're back to the next exchange. And we're going to start with Decidueye this time. Um, as I am mildly hypnotized, I don't think I should fight these guys as hard, maybe, you know? They're just in their cave. Um, so I'm going to instead step back and blink a few times, spread out my wings and flap them, and some of my softer, leafy feathers are going to fly off my wings and whirl around the crowbats, and I'm going to use feather dance as I kind of sway in place as these feathers, um, and my attempt is to weaken their next attack. Mm, interesting. I think that's probably going to be... Let me check some stuff here. As far as mechanics of the game, I'm not sure how that actually worked. <laughs> <laughs> I think probably the easiest way to do this would be to have you create an advantage that one of your friends can use moving forward. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to create an advantage for my friends so that the next time that they could get hit, it'll feel softer from their little wings. So that's going to be my attempt to create an advantage. Okay, so yeah, roll to create an advantage with flashy, let's say. That is a plus two. All right, yeah. So we're going to put an aspect on these bats, and that aspect is distracted by the pretty feathers. <laughs> and that is an aspect that you guys can invoke against them moving forward. Nice. Um, and with that, I will actually pass it back to the Golbat because they are feeling emboldened after the, the really successful attack that they saw their big bros do, and they're like, hey, look at that. They've all been hit by that hypnosis a bit, so let's go ahead and take them out. Mm -hmm. And yeah, now that you guys are a bit rattled by the hypnosis, they're going to just come in with a bite. Just a good old bite. Yummy! They're going to attack with forceful. How would you guys like to defend? I'm going to revert to my normal ditto form because I think I taste like and have the consistency of Play-Doh. So hopefully that'll <laughs> discourage them from biting too hard. Alright. Um, I'm going to look around quickly and I'm just going to pick up a rock in front of me and hold it up so that if they do bite it, they're just going to kink onto a rock. <laughs> I'm going to try to see if I can turn it around and jump on them as they come in. Oh, nice. All right. And Meowth, once again, is just going to try and dodge back and forth. So he's defending with quick, far-fetched. Let's have you defend with quick, Decidueye with clever, and ditto. You're probably like, these guys aren't going to expect how bad I taste. So that's probably sneaky, I think. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Plus four. Plus five. Plus three. Wait, there we go, boys. Now we're some merry Pokemon. Meowth only got a plus one. Oh, we'll no. see what the gold bats get. Eh. Not great, boys. That's a plus two. <gasps> and so, yeah, Meowth takes one stress, and the rest of you, you're able to successfully stave off the attack. And the Golbats are, they're pretty excited by the fact that they can hit Meowth. So oh, no. they're just kind of focusing on him at this point. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> and now that they've got Meowth where they want him, they're going to turn it over to the Crobats. And the Crobats are going to come in with Leech Life. Oh, no. They're going to try and bite into you guys and suck some of the energy out of you. They're going to do that with Forceful. How would you guys like to defend? Well, it worked pretty good the last time, so I'm like, yeah, you want some? I'm going to do the same. I'm going to look down at my rock and be like, this is genius. Why wasn't I doing this the whole time? And I'm just going to like <laughs> hold up my rock and try and defend with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take my leak and try to put it in, someone, in one of their mouths so that it stays open. <laughs> nice. All right. So I think Ditto, Farfetch, that's probably Forceful. And Decidueye, that'll be clever. And Meowth is uh, just going to try and keep dodging. Quick. I got a two. I got a three. So I'm going to use my stunt. I'm going to use remember my name and I'm going to get right in his face and shove the sword. So I'm going to re-roll. All right. 
trying to build up your reputation here in the caves. Yes. For a zero. <laughs> All right. And Meowth also got a zero. Oh, no. My little boys. My normal boys. So Decidueye and Ditto, you guys are able to stave off the Crobats and seeing that they can't hit you, they both go straight for Meowth and Farfetch'd. And so they got a plus two, meaning that each of you are going to take two stress. I'm going to take a minor consequence. Ooh, all right. So the minor consequence I'm going to give you as you feel some of the life being leached out of you, the consequence I'm going to give you is minor vampirism. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a dark type surfetch. Yeah. It's a region specific. Yeah, right. To Europe. <laughs> Yeah, you guys are looking at Farfetch'd like, oh no, and then you hear a thud not too far away from him, and you see that Meowth has fainted on the ground. Ah, Meowth. We'll have to help him in a minute. Yeah. That does it for all the bats, and they're going to turn it over to Ditto. Well, these guys have pissed me off, so I'm turning into Jinx. I'm going to use Straining Kiss. <gasps> all oh. right. <laughs> Give me that sweet life juice. I'm taking it back. <laughs> okay, is that on the Golbats or the Crobats? On the Crobats. All right. That's a pretty flashy attack, I would say. They're going to just try and defend with Quick to get out of there if they can. Moist. <laughs> I got a plus two. They got a flat zero. <gasps> yeah, boy. Get smooched, idiots. <laughs> yeah, so you reach out and you just grab both of them and bring them in for a huge embrace. <laughs> and give them both a smack on the side of the head with your lips. And they both just like pass out from how uncomfortable they are. <laughs> hey, get some every time. <laughs> and all of the crowbats are out of the combat. All right, Farfetch'd, let's wrap her up, hey? Yeah, you got just the two gold bats left. Cool, I want to do what I was going to do before, and I'm going to jump on the Mario style. Okay, <laughs> that seems like a pretty flashy way of attacking them. Also, you can attack with flashy. They're going to try and defend with forceful to hunker down for the attack. All right, well, that's a plus three. They got a plus six. Whoa. Uh, can I invoke a fate point? I have one more. Yeah, which of your aspects would you like to invoke? You can't confuse me. I'm not smart enough. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, that is a boost, so you can get that for free without needing to use a fate point. Oh, well, nice. Well, I'm going to use that fate point now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do that I'm afraid of normal Pokemon and freak out that someone got Meow. <laughs> All right, so you've got a boost, you've got a free invoke, and you can use either of those to either reroll or add plus two. I'm going to reroll. Or plus four. They've still got a plus six. Oof. Oh, yeah, that's right. Dang it. <laughs> so, yeah, they just, like, steal themselves against your attack, and you just, like, hop off of both of them and fall insipidly to the ground. And I'm pretty sure that Ditto's the only one who hasn't gone yet in this exchange. No, I smooched them and they died. Oh, that's right. <laughs> it's Decidueye. All right. What would you like to do? Being incredibly weak, but now that those that initially, I believe those that initially hypnotized me are now Audi, correct? They are, yes. Gotcha. So I'm a little bit, kind of shake that off a little bit, and I see him try to attack these last two, and I think about how awesome that spirit shackle was, but I've got one more trick up my sleeve and I close my hand around a leaf feather on my hip, and I get low, and like the classic anime style of every single anime that has ever existed, I'm just gonna flash by them, and you never really see me draw the sword, but I'm gonna use Leaf Blade. Yeah! All right, this seems like a very quick kind of attack. They're going to try and defend with Clever to see if they even notice that you are drawing your blade. Gotcha. Um, and I am going to use Distracted by the Pretty Feathers. Um, and I'm going to give myself a plus two. So that is a plus four. They got a minus one. <gasps> nice! <laughs> so the <laughs> final two combatants, they don't even notice you draw your sword. What does it look like as you finish this combat? You just see me in one place and then you see me in the next and you see like a green line where the arc of my sword went, but you never see the sword and you never see me draw it. You just see just an instant flash of me moving as I go across the cave. And as the final bats fall to the floor, you hear what sounds like a clapping <gasps> coming from further in the cave. And you see out of the shadows steps a Gengar with a jaunty little cap on his head. Oh, no. <laughs> I love him. He's my new friend. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, well, it takes quite a bit of effort to hold your own against all those bats in the caverns. I'm impressed. 
Yeah, we're pretty good at stuff like that, except Meowth is... Oh, I mean, he's dead. He's dead. Let's... No, no, we, we don't die in the Pokemon universe. Yeah. We just faint. He's I'm, fainted. I'm going to go over and take a take an Oran Berry and squeeze the juices into his mouth to wake him up. Yeah, he uh, pops up. His eyes are, like, fluttering. And he's like, oh, gosh, okay, okay. I don't think I'm ever going to fight again. That was bad, guys. You did so good. I'm so proud of you, Meowth. You held your own. You did so much better than I honestly thought you would. I thought you would be dead basically instantly, but you really did some damage on your own there. Yeah, it was pretty good. <laughs> uh, roll to overcome with Flashy to see if you can lift his spirits. I mean, it's not great, but it's a plus one. <laughs> plus one. He's like, <laughs> he so, so much confidence. You thought I was going to die instantly. Oh boy, this is, you know what? Before I was thinking that maybe I can do this. Now I'm thinking that maybe I can't do this. <laughs> and he deletes his boost. Oh no. <laughs> you can't win them all. Hey, Gengar. Gengar, you're so dashing in your cap and your mysterious air of, I don't know, you got that sort of like devil may care attitude. It is a nice hat. I like it. Well, you see, I'm the boss of these caves around here and those bats have been a mighty big thorn in my side for quite a while and I am very pleased that you've taken care of that for me. Yeah. We're very happy to be of assistance. We uh, were traveling with our, our small companion here to the castle on the other side of the mountains. We're attempting to assist some of the captured Pokemon there. So we, we ask your blessing to move through your cavern, oh good Pokemon. He gives a little bow and he says, Well, if you're taking out Don Giovanni, then you have my support. Come, you will not be hindered on your way through this cavern anymore. What a guy. What a great Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> and he leads you through the caverns and occasionally you'll see like a Geodude will turn around and it's like got its fists up and then Gengar will just leer at it. <laughs> and it's like, okay, okay, okay. And it like retreats back into the distance. Special defense lower. I'm out of here. <laughs> and eventually you guys make it to the other side of the caverns and Gengar pats you guys all on the backs and says, well, best of fortune to you. I can't leave this cavern because this is my domain and I must keep it safe. But you have my blessing with you. Well, if you ever need any assistance in the future, don't be afraid to reach out to Decidui and the Merry Pokemon. Yes. We reside in the Sudowoodoo Forest to the north. He takes your leaf feather that you've like written your contact info on this <laughs> this business feather and he puts it up into his cap and he says, A pleasure doing business with you. Ta ta, Gengar. Ta ta. <laughs> and you guys begin heading once more on your way towards Don Giovanni's castle. And I think that is where we're going to pick up next week. Awesome. Awesome. Man, <laughs> this was just like nothing but combat, but that was fun. There was a lot of bats in there, boys. <laughs> I mean, is it really a Pokemon cave if you don't get the annoying amount of Zubat? There has to be at least <laughs> infinity. If there's one thing you know about caves and Pokemon, you're going to find bats. Well, thanks everybody for listening to Improv Tabletop, and we'll be back next week with more adventures in the world of the Merry Pokemon. If you want more, go ahead and subscribe, maybe even give us a review. We would be as happy as a Gengar whose cave has been rid of that horrible bat scourge if you go ahead and give us a review on the podcatcher of your choice. We're also all over social media at Improv Tabletop, so if you'd like to suggest either a setting for us to play in or an aspect for one of our characters to use, you can tweet about us or comment on one of our posts using hashtag ImpTab setting or hashtag ImpTab aspect. Let's do a round of plugs. First, we've got our sister podcast, I Cast Fireball, a D&D 5e actual play, and we don't have to be cagey about who our special guests are anymore because it's been released to the world. We have Improv Tabletop cast members Caleb Anderton and Heather Brower as <gasps> guests on I Cast Fireball currently. Woo! That's awesome. <laughs> uh, it's so much fun. They've got great characters, a minotaur and a dwarf named Brick and Mortar. <laughs> They're bringing a lot of great energy to the podcast, so go check that out. Uh, it's been lots of fun. And the other thing that I would like to plug right now is Brian David Gilbert's Perfect Poke Wrap. Oh, yeah. so good. It's, it, you gotta watch the whole thing. It's worth it. Yeah, uh, we have definitely mentioned Brian David Gilbert before on the podcast. I definitely stole the Brotherhood of Brass from one of his Unraveled episodes <laughs> for Fallout Back. 
But yeah, check out the Unraveled series on Polygon featuring Brian David Gilbert, and especially check out his perfect poke rap. He uses various techniques, not only of modern hip hop, but also just like rhyming and meter in general to turn the original poke rap into something that is much more well-constructed. Beware though, when I first listened to it, I couldn't get it out of my head until I memorized it. So it, it, it's a bit of an earworm. Yes, <laughs> it will haunt your dreams. And also once again, hey BDG, if you're listening to this, you're one of my heroes. I'd love to have you guest on the podcast. Okay, bye. <laughs> Uh, JP, is there anything that you would like to plug? <laughs> nothing, nothing really. I'm just, you know, this whole time I've been thinking, like I plugged at the very beginning, how am I going to beat that stupid game? <laughs> <laughs> I No one told me what I was getting into when I bought it until afterwards. I was like, hey, the point of this game is you die a lot. And I'm like, oh. yes. <laughs> Are you a masochist? Boy, have I got a game for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, ugh. So I've been watching videos on like how to fight and get better. And so there you go. No shame. <laughs> we'll see. A little add on for JP. He can plug the insane Pokemon rap song by the Kevin Bennett. It's only the first 150, but that is another fun one. If you want to give the Poker rap a listen to right on Connor, anything that you'd like to plug? Yes. Brian David Gilbert has a series called Dances Moving. Oh my uh, god. Just while we were speaking of the man, the myth, the legend. Um, and it is such a fun journey through movement, dance, and a narrative that is surprisingly emotional. Just while we're on the whole polygon side of things, check that out too. Yeah. In the finale episode of that little mini series, the song that plays during his final dance number, it is the best song that I listened to in the past year. It's a bomb. And I was almost crying while I watched a man dance like a crab. This it is was... <laughs> this is the sentence that Ned said to me over text that got me to watch it. <laughs> I was almost crying watching a man crab walk. <laughs> it's, it's kind of absurd, but also very beautiful and very cathartic and very touching in a very human way. Yeah. Dance is moving. Ah, so good. Christian, is there anything that you would like to plug? Yes. A um, little bit of a heavier note reach out to people and be better about being in contact. I lived in Ukraine for a couple of years and we all know what's going on over there right now. And I've been not the best about reaching out to people in the past. So I've been trying to be better about that obviously recently right now. Uh, so my plug is just reach out to people. Even if it's just to say hi, just talk to people, try and be better about contact because it's not easy all the time just contacting people. So that's my plug, talk to people. Remember that you have friends and that they want to hear from you too. <laughs> it's a good plug. Yeah, it's a simple way to be a light in the world. Word. Well, thanks everybody so much for joining us here in the world of the Merry Pokemon. I'm Ned Wilcock, your host and GM, and I've been joined by... Justin Porter, a.k.a. JP, uh, mildly a vampire. Connor <laughs> Douglas Wood, tarnished one. And Christian Randall, mildly hypnotized. Uh, much love and stuff, everybody. We'll catch you next week on Improv Tabletop. Ba ba booey. Ba ba booey. Yep. This is WKR7. And you're listening to nothing. Yeah, there really is like a streaming internet radio station called Radio Hyrule that just plays Zelda remixes 24 7. Dude, yes, that sounds so great. I gotta check that out. I've been listening to Zelda Synthwave lately and it is mm. it's pretty awesome. I would just have a station that just plays the Guardian targeting music from Breath of the Wild. Oh god, why? But it never, it's just the piano ramp up part it never gets anywhere else. that's an anxiety machine <laughs> yeah <it's>, holy cow <laughs>